Welcome to the exclusive. I'm your host, Sharon Tharp. Uh, I've been meaning to get this guy on the podcast for a while, and it seems like the perfect time because he's, you know, just off the challenge 40. And I'm really happy to uh, introduce uh, Big Brother 18 vet, uh, alum and challenge vet, Polly Calafiori. Polly, how are you? Thank you for being here. I'm good. I'm good. Uh, I know your base is mostly Big Brother, so they may kill you for this. Oh, come on. No, <laughs> it's been it, how many years has it been since that season, by the way? Gotta be eight years. Yeah. Wow. Eight years. It's been a while. It's been a while. It's been a while. It's been fun. I mean, listen, the the jury clips of me and Devon still resurface every Big Brother year. Um, you know, Devon and I did two seasons of the challenge together. We worked together in epic fashion. Um, you know, but it's always good to see those clips still having the having the legs to them, you know? Yeah, we'll get into a little bit, but I mean, at the end of the day, I sort of am like if two people made up in real life after the show that they were on, it's not really up to us to be judging anymore. It's kind of like your thing, right? Oh, I think they just posted for entertainment value at this point. <laughs> I mean, there's th actually, there are a lot of, I will get a lot of big brother fans that are just like, I still remember you and Dave Vaughn. And I'm just like, well, it, clearly not well enough. Cause you didn't watch us on our other endeavors together. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, I want to talk about those in endeavors. Uh, the challenge 40, obviously, big premiere um it was really fun but I i'm curious what brought you back i know you did the challenge usa season two but you and car was sort of taking a break from like the flagship for a while what brought you back for 40. i mean you know how how are you going to say no to a staple season of the challenge i mean season 40 to be a part of something like that like you or even be considered and be invited um that means you're a staple of your era um and i was honored um, that I was considered a staple of my era. So I was like, yeah, why not? And odds are, it's probably going to be crazy. And I usually like the crazier seasons more so than the carnival game seasons. And, um, you know, I, I was really looking forward to the opportunity of, uh, showcasing my stuff amongst all, all of the great names. You know, mm -hmm. I think there's only a few missing. Yeah. I, when you saw the people in your era, were you happy? Were you worried? Were you like, what were your thoughts? I mean, I was a little worried from the sense that I, you know, other than um, Noris and uh, Rasio, um, I really had nobody that I played with. I, I didn't really have any friends, um, you know, so it being a team season, I was kind of like, all right, well, as long as my team wins, mm. um, I'll be all right. And then if we lose, I could maybe use the aspect that I've played the game before and that I'm a strong competitor for them to keep me around. But um but yeah definitely more enemies on the team than friends yeah i listen i know you so you and johnny have been okay so did you go into that season being like okay like he probably won't target me right away like what were your thoughts about you guys and bananas going into the season uh like my team and bananas or like yeah in, in terms of like did you think bananas was going to be an ally or not you weren't sure i guess i th i think bananas is always going to strategically play um to get the advantage for his game and his team game um you know regardless of whether you're on good terms um with bananas i think anybody that gets shocked by a decision that he makes um you know it's it's bananas right so even if i was coming into the season with bananas as an ally which i was realistically, I know that he's smart enough that there's going to be a point in time in the game where if our, if my team was strong and his team was strong, he's going to sit there and be like, well, if I want my team to win, that team needs to get weakened. Um, mm. and vice versa. If it, you know, goes down to individuals, you know, he's also going to look at it and be like, well, I want to win the final. I'm sure some of my allies want to win the final who do I have the best shot of winning a final against? Uh, you know, so it's one of those things where it's almost like a, a, a ticking time bomb. You know, it's like, when is it going to go off? Is it going to go off at the midway point? Um, it, are shots going to be taken early? Um, are shots going to be taken right before the final? But shots will be taken at some point, and you just have to kind of either get them before it happens or, you know, if you have no – reason to go after him just wait for him to take the shot and just be like well i was expecting this so now's the time yeah it's like you never know and i didn't know which way they were gonna go but 
in terms of Laurel, like between all the ups and downs with her and Kara, I still was, I guess, surprised that she threw her in. But like, what is your relationship with Laurel? And did you kind of expect that? I, I don't really have a relationship with Laurel. I mean, I tried to have a relationship with Laurel on um, War of the Worlds 2. Um, just because she was a strong competitor. I've never played with her before. I was excited to play with her. And I was more along the lines of, you know, whenever she would try to speak, she would get shut down um, on our team. You know, like a lot of the more domineering personalities. Um, mm. You know, there was a lot of voices on Team USA that season. A lot of strong male competitors, um, you know, a lot of strong female competitors. But the males tend to be like, this is what we should do on the daily uh, to win because they have a lot of the experience with that. And, you know, every time Laurel would want to pipe up, she would get shot down, you know, shot down almost in a rude way. And, you know, I was one of the lone people being like, no, you guys shut the fuck up. Let her talk. Mm. Um, you know, and I was always hyping her up before challenges and I was always hyping her up after, you know, somebody would shut her down and just be like, Hey, listen, you know, block that out athlete mentality. Like let's lock in, let's get through this win, you know, and, and being nice to her. Um, you know, so that was my relationship with Laurel. Then, um, obviously we ended up on different sides of the alliances and she went home. Um, and I, you know, like I'm, I'd like to think I'm good at like reading people. And, you know, there's just – when you look into Laurel's eyes, there's just nothing behind them. Um, and, and, and my thing is that, to me, is somebody who has no uh, feelings or emotions, um, only switches on the feelings and emotions in order to, you know, sway something. You know, I, like I think if Laurel was just in her natural habitat, she's a robot all the time. Wow. Um, that's just how I personally feel. And then coming into this season, just, you know, as much as Cara wanted to think that maybe the rivalry would have been done after she beat her on um, All-Stars 4, in in my mind, and, if, and, and you know, I know better, I'm like, <laughs> no, it's, it's not over. It's never going to be over. Um, you know, she is never going to uh, like you. And she's never going to, uh, you know, not throw you in at every chance um, she could. And, you know, that's just my thing with Laurel is Laurel is just that person. She'll she'll hit below the belt. And like, listen, I'm I'm not knocking people who hit below the belt. I sure as hell used to do it all the time. Um, however, I'd like to think that after X amount of years, like my smack talk sticks to the game. My mm -hmm. smack talk sticks to what's going on in the game. Um, I don't take below the show, below the belt shots anymore. Um, and outside of the game, I'm also not going to take below the belt shots because I've just evolved from that. Um, and you can still provide a lot of messy drama without taking the below the belt shots. And I think that she still will take the below the belt shots. Um, as we saw in episode three, um, you know, she was upset that she was a target. She takes a below the belt shot at Darrell and it's like, there's no room for that. That's kind of, you know, I just, it, it's in poor form. I'll just mm. put it that way. Is it, and I don't know Laurel personally, so I'm not, but like with the Kara thing, is it just like one of them ha wants to be the best female competitor? Is that like, there a jealousy there with Laurel or? I, I, I don't think it's that. There's a big difference between who wants to be the best competitor. And then there is somebody who truly views themselves as above somebody else, not from a competitive standpoint, but just from like a life standpoint, um, who always wants somebody to be beneath them. Um, you know, to me, the, uh, the rhetoric and the, the way I see the relationship is like a, a toxic relationship, almost like an emotionally abusive relationship, um, mm -hmm. uh, in that sense where, you know, I've seen the whole, being nice, being sweet, reeling her in and then beating her down and then beating her down and then beating her down and then a nice, sweet, reeling her in and then beating her down again and beating her down again. And, you know, there is some sort of psychological warfare that goes into these games. Um, but the psychological sure. warfare is more like smack talk of like, you're going to lose. I'm going to beat you. You suck. You're always going to suck. I'm always going to be better than you. Like things of that nature, not this personal thing. 
Yeah, I don't know where it stems from. You know, so many things have happened between Carl and Laurel, but like how many years have gone by? So you really can't use any of the past things um, to still do it. And like, you know, for somebody who just got done screaming at Carr's face, like, we don't even talk. You don't even know me. It's like, all right, well, if you guys fucking don't know each other, what's the fucking hold up here? One second, you guys don't know each other. So Carr can't speak on anything that's going on with you. But when you want to speak on things that's going on with her, all of a sudden, you know her and everything in the rhetoric afterwards is like, Car and I just have like this relationship that only will understand. It's like, sweetheart, y'all have never dated. Y'all have never <laughs> fucked. Y'all have never done any of this. What? Do, why are you talking like it's some kind of like, like kindred spirits connected by the soul that will never be without each other? It's like, honey, you got to wake the fuck up. This isn't a romance novel. Got it. So she like wants it both ways, depending on what's convenient at the time. Seemingly, seemingly, yeah. Um, I don't know. It's 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 just weird. It's it's to me, it's weird. To me, it's like they're at a point in their careers where they could have a Johnny and West moment. Yeah, and that's it. Now, I'm not saying Johnny and West are best friends, hang out all the time, call each other all the time, but in the game, they're like, "Hey, yeah. man, we're cool. We could get further working together." On that side of things. It's like, it's never going to happen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, talk to me about you and Theo. Like when you saw him and you're like, were you like, this is definitely going to bubble up again? Was there tension there? Or were you hoping that, okay, maybe we can not target each other right away? <laughs> um, you know, there was definitely tension there. Um, however, once we saw it was a team format, um, we were aligned in the fact of like, we're both pretty strong players mm -hmm. we both proven that we can play games with these vets make it to the end out compete them um you know and then make finals we both haven't won um you know so we were having conversation along the lines of like there is going to come a time where this is going to go individual let's settle it then like men you know and until then let's just do what's best for the team enemies can work well together on teams sometimes enemies can almost elevate teams. Um, you know, where that went awry was, um, you know, obviously we, we, we both didn't want to get last place yeah. in, in that daily. Unfortunately he got last place, which, you know, sucks when you have one of your strongest competitors as the last place automatically going in where it went awry for me was you have two clear cut options on the table with Josh and myself uh, and Kylan, or so three options, but two outside of me with Josh and Kylan, both have never made finals, both, you know, haven't proven whether they're good at teams or good at dailies. Um, you know, so when it got back to me that he was going around the house being like, I want Paulie, it's time to settle our beef now. I was like, whoa. Yeah. Uh, you know, so that immediately, you know, uh, flipped the switch on in my head, um, to, to be like, fuck this guy. Um, I, you know, everything we talked about, you know, he's doing the same thing he did on war of the worlds too, coming in being like, yeah, 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 yeah. And then you're working with the other side and, you know, it was so easy for, uh, I think Josh, it was to like, put the idea in his head and be like, look at the numbers. It's like, there were no fucking numbers on our team at that point. But this just goes yeah. to show how stupid Theo is as a fucking strategist. You know what I mean? There were no numbers on our team. The only people that might have been thinking about numbers would have been Josh and Casey because they're from Big Brother. Mm. The way Theo yeah. and I were looking at the team was like an actual team of like weakest one got to go. You know what I mean? So when he's sitting there asking for me and I'm like, hey, dumbass, <laughs> me and you were one and two and three. You know, if you want to put Horacio in there top three competitors on the team. What are we doing here? Yeah. Um, you know, and, and that's why it went the way it went in the deliberation, because I, I, I threw out all diplomatic things that I had <laughs> wanted to say. Well, and you mentioned Josh and I know you and Josh have sort of repaired your relationship, at least to an extent. Were you not thrilled with him then for 
watching it back, I was blown away because once again, all he was doing was talking to me being like, brother, I'm not campaigning for you. Like you're my brother. I love you. I'm not cam mm. campaigning for you. And I was just kind of like, <laughs> I, you know, I was like, I'm campaigning for the weakest guy on the team. So whoever you think that is, look in the mirror. Could be you, <laughs> could be Kylan at this point. Um, but like, that's kind of where it was at. So it's like, I, you know, I can't be too upset for somebody covering their own ass and looking for their own ass. And it's like, you know, you look at Kylan and you look at Josh they look at Theo, they're in their brains being like, if I can avoid this elimination at all costs, I'm going to do it because Theo's a monster. And, you know, there's me who's just like, I don't really give a fuck how much of a monster he is. I'm also a monster. And because it is the challenge, I like my odds as to what it possibly could be as an elimination. I'm like, I think I can beat Theo out of nine out of 10 eliminations. So I'm going to take my chances. And hopefully it's something that, Fits me. Of well, that's, yeah, that's what I was going to say. Of course you got hall brawl. Yeah. Of course. Of, of all the eliminations that it could have been, mm -hmm. hall brawl is it. And I'm like, and there's the one out of 10. There, <laughs> there it is. There it is right there. Um, but, you know, I'm not going to sit there and, uh, you know, beat myself before the competition um, even starts because that's not really where my mindset comes. And, you know, I'm a probability guy. So like, as I'm looking at the hall bra, I'm like, you know, there's a 95% probability that this goes bad, but I'll take that 5% probability of maybe he stands up too tall. Maybe he trips over his feet. Maybe, you know, the impact happens at a certain way where I'm able to keep my footing and we could turn it into a wrestling match or, you know, maybe he's not as fast as he once was because he's heavy as shit this time around. Mm. Um, and you know, so I'm going to go off of the confidence of the 5% because, you know, you also factor in, if you go into something afraid or scared, um, you're putting yourself at a high risk of injury. And even though I did get concussed and that sucks, I'll take a concussion over like a broken nose or a broken orbital bone or a potential, you know, neck injury or knee injury or shin or ankle, or anything that could have went wrong with a massive human throwing themselves at you. Um, you know, so that's, the, yeah. you know, I have no regrets of everything that I said leading up into that. And I will still talk that shit to this day, every <laughs> single day to Theo's face, um, you know, until we see each other again. Yeah, I'm sure it'll happen. I don't like I love Hallbrow. It's such a classic, but I'm still shocked they do it because it's so it's so likely that you're going to get injured. Right. Like the likelihood's got to be super high. I can't remember a time that men did a full hall brawl mm -hmm. um, because I'm not going to count the one on USA, too, with the pads. Um, I can't remember a time that men did a full hall brawl where there wasn't an injury. And I'm also not going to count the one on Ryder Dies where they had like the pole that they had to run into. Oh yeah. Um, Cause when you look back at it, the last two times there were hall brawls on a season, Fessy was in them and he absolutely obliterated the two people that he went against and broke limbs on them. Um, you know, now fast forward to this one, you know, two concussions, um, yeah. you know, and that's fine. Um, you know, I think Derek Kay and I, we were like kind of bouncing off of each other as to what changes could be made to the hall brawl. And we came up with like, you know, what if players started on the ground, like an Oklahoma drill in football, where instead of starting hands on the wall, where you got two fast guys, Theo and I are probably two of the fastest guys in the house. So our collision happened within a split second. Um, but if we both started laying down face up with our feet touching the wall, and then it's like, you got to get up and then run it. You know, you're not able to kind of get that track start where like both of us were like leaning in and it's almost like, as soon as your hands get let off the wall, it's like a gunshot. Yep. Um, we also talked about making the halls just a little bit wider. So that way you could kind of 100% get your, maybe not go around, but 100% at least get your head out of harm's way for a neck injury. Fair. Um, you know, so the, I mean, those are the only things we came up with. So, you know, maybe there's people listening. I don't think that they should take away the authenticity of a hall brawl. I just think that they should 
you know, make it less neck injury esque. Fair. Yeah. Cause I, I don't want something bad to happen. Um, well, after obviously that happened, you're already like, shit, I just got eliminated. Then you get to watch Kara go into elimination. Talk to me yeah. about just watching that and sort of, because you had already gone at that point, right? Like, I don't know what the yes. editing showed. Okay. Everybody took their shots early and, you know, and that was it. I mean, I kind of did it to myself, but <laughs> in my defense, the conversations that I had with Michelle and Horacio beforehand were all leaning towards you know, that Horacio wasn't going to try and strong arm Michelle on my behalf because Norris wanted Olivia yep. and Michelle was being pulled in by the vacation Alliance and, you know, using the cop out of, you know, Theo's asking for you. And I'm like, okay, so are you going to be an idiot or are you going to play the game for down the line? Um, and that then, vacation uh, Alliance, man, always come in, coming into play. Always coming into play. Always coming into play and nobody picks up on it. I mean, everybody knows about it, but nobody's, yeah. you know, calls them out or says anything. Uh, they're Listen, they're very likable people in terms of like they come in, hands up, partying. Hey, let's make everybody feel good. Bring down the defense mechanisms and then boom, strike, strike, strike. And next thing you know, they're making more finals. Um but yeah, I, it, it was. It's always tough to be in that situation. Obviously, we've never been in that situation. Kara had to watch me go into elimination on War of the Worlds one. Um, you know, so it's definitely nerve wracking. You're hoping that your person comes back, but in this case, I was already gone. Yeah. So I was just like, don't let them take a one two shot here and and win. You know, because all her and I were talking about before that was like, we're coming back in. We're flipping the fucking house on its head. <laughs> we are screaming in everybody's faces and calling out every single person and their mother and their brother and their cousins, um, you know, for what what, what happened. Right. Because this is, a, this is a team effort at the end of the day. Yeah. There's not one person in the house that tried to influence. Maybe let's not throw Paulie and Carr in first elimination. And, you know, uh, you know, but this was, I, I'm pretty sure this was majority Laurel's decision because we saw her running around the house, just like War of the Worlds 2, trying to intimidate every single person that was in power, um, having conversations with many people as possible. And she's very lucky that I didn't come back because with what I had lined up, even in the short time, me being there of the people that I pulled in. It was about to be a bloodbath worse than War of the Worlds 2. Only on War of the Worlds 2, I was a little bit more humble mm -hmm. in the sense that I didn't rub it in their faces every step of the way that I had the numbers and they were going to go in every time. But this time around, the bloodbath was going to happen and I was going to make sure that they knew how badly they fucked up every single day. Um Every single day until until they got tagged. And that's why you guys are great TV as well. <laughs> um, I do want to ask, though, like going back, Cody's on Big Brother. Did you ever think, hey, I would want to do reality TV before he was on Big Brother? Was that even like in your sort of world? You know, as funny as it is, I got asked to do the first season of Are You the One? Oh, uh, yeah, I was living in New York. I was working in New York. Um, I think I, I was dating like the like one of the top editors from like Seventeen Magazine, um, which is how I got my brother in Seventeen Magazine before going on Big Brother. I might know her. I have used to work there. <laughs> yeah, I mean, this was like way this was like way back in the day. I think yeah. this had to have been like twenty. I don't know, twenty fourteen. Ten years, uh, ago, yeah. Or sorry, 2013, because Cody did Big Brother in 2014. Um, mm -hmm. So, you know, I went to her and I was like, hey, I don't know what this show is, I said. But, you know, I was like, I could just do it and do whatever. And she's like, no, nah, you're not going to do it. She was Australian. And I was <laughs> like, all right. I was like, I guess I'm not doing it. And then I was like, all right, well, I guess there goes reality TV. And then as it would happen, me and Cody were working for an entertainment company doing like Barn Bot Mitzvahs. We got seen um doing a doing a party in New York City somebody who was local there um saw us and was like you guys ever heard of Big Brother and we were like yeah we love that show and then 
you know, Cody goes through the casting process because I was like, uh, this guy's uh, really good looking. He should be on TV. And, uh, <laughs> and, uh, and then that's how that happened. I never expected for me to get my shot on TV. Uh, Cause I was helping put on like the casting calls in New York, New Jersey, and Philly. Um, I would help organize them and everything like that. And then I remember we went through all of the casting calls for big brother 18. And I was like, all right, Robin, everything's good. And she's like, yep, we got some really great candidates. And I was like, awesome. And then two months later, she called me and she was like, do you want to go? And I was like, sure, let's, let's do it. And then, That's you know, everything's wow. kind of been a whirlwind from there. I guess like the merger with CBS and Viacom started happening. Then, you know, I was originally supposed to be on vendettas. I hurt my ankle. They put me on X on the beach, you know, oh, I so, forgot you were on X on the beach. I know. totally forgot that I've been around. Oh, yes. Well, when you were watching Cody on, on Big, Bro Big Brother 16, did that deter you at all? Like, what was it like watching as a family member? I mean, I was having a blast. Like, I <laughs> loved it. Big, good. Yeah, Big Brother 16, I feel like the I feel like the toxicity on Twitter was not there. Not yet. Right. <laughs> and and I think, yeah, it was not. And I also I think because Frankie was there. There was a lot of like young, you know, teeny bopper girls watching the show then. And they were all just like enamored with the show. So like they weren't mm -hmm. sitting there like cursing everybody out on Twitter. Like they were sitting there just being like, oh, my God, Cody, you're so beautiful. We love Frankie. Can we meet your sister? Um, you know, like Big Brother 16, one of the one of the seasons that definitely put it on the map on a larger scale, um, you know, in that capacity. And that was the first time you ever really saw cast members come out with these massive followings um and uh and watching it i i was having a blast because i was sitting there being like yeah cody's killing it he's having an yeah. amazing time and then you know fast forward two years and i guess that's when twitter became extremely toxic in the big brother world and you know i thought i was just in there playing some cutthroat big brother um and you know I freaking came out and was like, oh, damn, these Big Brother fans are pretty uh, <laughs> savage. I probably shouldn't have been telling the live feeds that Reddit and Vevmo people are losers. But oh, well. <laughs> oh, God. Did Cody give you any advice before you went in? The only advice that Cody and my family gave me is they said, do not turn on the um, ultra competitive guy. Cause they're like, you are, they're like, you are like, you know, you're, you're a nice guy, like charming, charismatic. But the second that that guy comes out, he's a absolute psychopath. Cause like they've seen me in sports with wrestling, with fighting, with soccer. Like when that guy comes out, he's just an absolute dog. Um, and you know, does not care who he's talking to, what he's saying. Everything is just at that point, kill, kill, kill. Um, from like a mentality standpoint, from a competing standpoint and everything, um, you know, so needless to say that guy came out and the rest is history. I know you watched BB 22 cause Cody was back, but have you kept up with the show since your season? Are you like in and out or not really? I'm in and out. Uh, since my season, I've been in and out like for 19, I was in and out, you know, I, I, um, for 20, I was in and out. 21 in and out 22. I obviously watched the full thing. Um, 23, I was in and out. I watched Taylor. was Taylor. Yeah. Yeah. I watched Taylor's season a good amount. Um, couldn't even tell you who was on big brother 25. <laughs> if I'm Sorry? being honest. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, I mean, yeah, I guess, yeah, Sari was there with her son, but I I don't really remember anything too memorable from it. Like, It wasn't than, that good of a season, so don't yeah, worry. Yeah, other than like Sari just doing like what Sari does, which is just, you know, yep, at, like being masterful at her craft. Um, we'll just call it that. Um, but yeah, no. that's it. I mean, this season um, – <laughs> This season, I this season I've been uh, you know uh, watching and paying attention to a little bit more because I saw, I just saw the gifts going off of like Angela like mocking somebody's walk, 
Yep. And like people like making that go viral of like me strolling into work like five minutes late. And I was like, all right, I think we've got a character here. And then, you know, Tucker emerges and I'm like, we definitely got a character here. Um, so I like to watch for uh, the characters, you know, like I like that's what's fun for me. Like I could sit here and break down gameplay and all that stuff. But, you know, that's boring. And I feel like when, you know, even though. I can argue that for 50% of the game, I was pretty masterful. Um, I was uh, not masterful for anything past 50% of the game. Um, I Yeah. Well, speaking of Tucker, like I know Cody knows him to some extent. Do you, do you have you met him in the past? No, I've never met Tucker. I don't know Tucker. Um, I've just been watching him because he's been giving me like major Zach Rance vibes. Totally Zach Rance. hundred yeah. percent. He's like a Zach Rance, but better at competitions. At first I was like, I think he's Zach Rance meets Enzo a little bit, but I don't know. <laughs> he is, but it, like Angela's meltdowns have been like, uh, give me life. Yeah. Yeah. Wait. So have you actually, have you gone back and watched your season ever? Or are you kind of, I've never watched my season. Yeah, a lot of people say that. And honestly, I don't blame you because I would not want to watch myself at all. So. Yeah, I've never watched my seasons. I mean, I could still pretty much remember, which is what may, makes Big Brother a very unique experience. It is what most people don't realize. Uh, it is 99% traumatic um, all the time because, you know, imagine your house with no windows, um, you know, limited access to the outside world like you yeah, can't even go outside yeah you're not able to get vitamin d every day um i didn't know that i had like you know like uh like claustrophobia or anxiety or anything because i had never been claustrophobic or anxious and i remember post big brother it took me about a year to get over even you know like every time i would go on a plane i would get claustrophobic and anxious and I realized that it was, you know, hearing the door shut was like a trigger from hearing the back your backyard door shut and lock. Um, wow. You know, so like these are real things. These are real problems. Like being able to trust people, um, you know, is pretty hard, especially when you just get off and you enter into the outside world and, you know, you could be meeting people for the first time. And, you know, they meet you and then all of a sudden, you know, you're seeing something on Twitter and you're just like, oh, this fucking piece of shit was just really nice to my face. And they're just like on Twitter being like, oh, I just met this person. I told him to fuck off. And it's like, no, you didn't. <laughs> you asshole. Like, what are you doing here? Um, and uh, like there, it's things like that. It's, you know, lack of privacy, you know, especially if you come out of the house in like a showmance. Um, you know, I remember. Even like even when we had separated, it was like, you know, I couldn't even go out to eat um without people taking pictures of stuff. Like I would go out to eat with friends and family members who were female, and all of a sudden those pictures would end up on Twitter and people would be fucking dogging the shit out of me wow. and family and like and I'm like, dude, like relax. There's the people who watch Big Brother for the pure entertainment and the pure joy and the pure gamesman and all that stuff. And, you know, then there's the other people. They're like, um, they're like couch quarterbacks. What are they thinking doing this? It's like, I don't know. What the fuck, like, you think we see every conversation that you see on the live feeds, you moron? Like, yeah. no, that's why it's Big Brother. There's a conversation happening in room four. As I'm having a conversation in room one, I don't hear that conversation like you do. So if I'm talking to this person being like, yeah, I really like that person in room four. I have no idea that they're saying, yeah, we're about to get him out, but you do. And you're like, you fucking idiot. How could you trust this person? It's like ignorance is bliss. Yeah. Also, like, I just feel like we can never, be, they can never be happy. So even like, I'm like, oh, Tucker is such an entertainment. Like it sucks. He's leaving. And it's like, well, he was making the season boring. I'm like, regardless, we could, they can never be happy. He was <laughs> not making the season boring. Right. It, that's and, insane. And that is insane to say. to say. That is absolutely crazy to say. Good luck with the entertainment for the rest of the season, everybody. Yeah. Um, Because he's gone. You know, it's kind of like when a certain character was evicted and they had to start focusing more on the jury house, more so than the real house. 
Yep. Yep. You know, like yeah. I think I think on my season they focused more on the jury house than they have on any other season because all the entertaining people were in there. Actually, yeah, that has to be true. I don't think I feel like we haven't seen any of the jury house the last few years. So exactly. Um, I will. I just want to ask one question about this, and I'm sure you've talked about this before in interviews. But when you think about those times with Davon, and you guys have made up obviously since then, do you have regrets, or you look back like that was a different person? I'm not even that person anymore. I've grown from that. Like, what do you? I guess what's the sentiment when you do think about those things? Um, my sentiment is that me and Davon are two people cut from the same cloth, right? We come from a family and a community where the person who loses their cool first loses. So you're going to poke, mm-hmm. you're going to poke, and you're going to poke, and you're going to trade blows with each other. And, you know, her and I have talked about it and we laughed and she was like, yeah, you got me. You got me to crack. You know what I mean? She's like, I was throwing things at you to get you to have a reaction. You were throwing things at me to get me to have a reaction. I had a reaction. Um, You know, um, everything is a learning experience. Obviously, I'm a much different person than I was. But when it comes to smack talk and shit talk, (laughs) right? Like, what do you want me to regret? Like, if somebody's insulting me, I'm not allowed to insult them back. You know, and once again, like, if somebody was insulting her, you would expect her to insult them back. You know what I mean? And my thing is, that was a blow up between the two of us. Her and I, as adults, have spoken about it, have squashed it, have worked together on two seasons, like, phenomenally. Um, You know, like, we crushed it on Final Reckoning, um, you know, with our strategy, uh, you know, the Redemption House strategy. Um, And then we crushed it on War of the Worlds 1. So, you know, that's, I, I don't really look back on anything with regrets and my thought process with everything is you're never going to make everybody like you. And it's hard to think. Yeah, that's true. If you don't pay my bills, if you don't wipe my ass, I don't really care about (laughs) what you have to say about me. Right. I pay my own bills. Um, I think I did an interview right after big brother and I was like, Hey, for everybody who supports me and loves me really appreciate it. Hope you love me for those of you who don't well, fuck you. I still have that same sentiment to this day. Um, you know, and, and that's really all that was between Devon and I, like everybody tries to make it something more than it was, um, you know, where it was just a trading of insults between two people and anybody who has a family and a large family who talks smack and does all that stuff, you can, you can understand exactly what that was. That is, Mm -hmm. that is your, your aunt and your uncle going back and forth at each other. And then all of a sudden your aunt gets up and throws a drink in his face and is like, fuck you, you're an asshole. Or, you know, that's your two uncles trading blows to each other. And the other one's like, yeah, well, that's why you fucking never made it as a D one athlete. And then all of a sudden there's a fist fight that breaks the fuck out. You know what I mean? Like, these are just things that happen. um, If you have individuals that, have strong opinions. So mm-hmm. my thing is Devon has a strong opinionated uh personality. I have a strong opinionated personality. Yeah. What should I have a regret for? Because you know, we, we we got into an argument. You know what I mean? There you go, people. There you um, go. You're welcome, from you're the- welcome for the good TV. Okay. That's what you should really be saying is Paulie, thank you for the freaking good TV. Devon, thank you for the good TV. <laughs> We miss you guys. I mean, that was, uh, they were cutting to your, the jury house a lot. So it must have been boring in the house. I don't know. Yeah. Um, wait. So, anyone else from the cast that you've caught up with or run into over the years? Anyone you're still friendly with? Um, other than uh, Devon, you know, she's probably who I talk to a lot. I talk to Corey Brooks a lot. Um, so, I've got a really great relationship with Corey Brooks. I was at his wedding. Um, oh. Uh, Yeah, him and I stay in touch a lot. I see him every time I'm in California. Um, I'm friendly with majority of the people from uh, Big Brother 18. Like me and Paul um, keep trying to get each other when we're in, you know, when either of us are in New York City, but we keep missing each other. Um, And that's really it. I mean, Nicole and Victor are doing the whole husband and wife thing. They stay pretty secluded. Um, You know, I I I saw she was just on your brother's podcast, though. That's nice to see. 
Yeah. I mean, they're close. They're super yeah. close. Um, you know, I'll touch base with, uh, Tiffany every now and then just to say hi. Um, big Meech every now and then just to say hi. Um, I don't even know why I'm, uh, losing her name. I'm trying to think who else is on Bronte. Um, Bronte. <laughs> I don't know why I felt like you were going to say Bronte. Yeah. Keep in touch with Bronte, uh, every now and then. Um, so yeah, it's good. It's fun. Okay. Um, looking back, you know, Paul lost to Nicole five to four. You voted for Nicole. Was there any sort of doubt in your mind that you were going to vote for Nicole that night or talk to me about voting for her? There, there was no doubt in my mind. I was going to vote for Nicole that night. Um, you know, just because mine and her alliance started before mine and Paul's alliance. Um, you know, so that, that's just that, th that's kind of where that went. Um, you know, obviously I, you know, I, I did think that me, Paul, Victor, um, and Corey had the ability to kind of make it to Swag. the end. Yeah. Make oh. it to the end and uh, like, no, like make it to the end, um, and have, um, you know, Nicole and, uh, Zakia there, um, you know, and, and I, and I forget who Paul and Victor were trying to lock in. I mean, I think they wanted Bridget and Michelle, which I was also fine with all of those people. Um, you know, so I thought that we had it within us to like make it to that point, um, you know, and then kind of start clipping um, based off of there. Um, but, you know, everything happens for a reason. You know, yeah. I, didn't, I don't I don't think I made final two deals with all of those people. Um, like I only had made it with Corey. Mm. But I, you know, I guess I had the kind of relationships with Victor and um, Paul where like when they were comparing notes, they were like, I would take Paulie to final two. And they were like, no, I would take Paulie to final two also. And then they were like, well, who would Paulie take to final two? Oh, Corey. Oh, okay. We got to fuck We got to, we got to do this now. Got it. You're jogging my memory because it's been a minute since I've seen your season. So I'm like, yeah, it's been a while. And my memory might be all hazy. I mean, I'm coming off of two concussions. So who knows? Oh, my God. I was going to ask you when you're walking around, obviously, if you're with Cara, people must recognize you, of course. But like, do you ever do people come up to you ever just for Big Brother? Or is it always the challenge now? It really depends on where I am. Yeah. Um, so if we're in like Big Brother heavy areas um, like like Florida um, oh. like Texas. Um, and I'm pretty like, I mean, I, we were just in Hershey park, Pennsylvania. Um, and a lot of people were coming up to me for big brother, um, hmm. you know, and parts of Florida, big brother, um, parts of Texas, big brother. Um, you know, obviously once I'm in the tri-state, then it's like kind of challengeville yep. there mixed with big brother. So um, speaking of Cara, I, what's, I mean, I just saw her, I know she's with you. So like the status of you guys are good. Cause I know there was like rumor or reports that you aren't. Uh, yeah, we're not, we don't talk, we're, we're not talking about that. You know, there might be, okay. there might be something that gets, uh, spoken about in, uh, in a week or two. Uh, but you know, we're just working through things. Okay. I respect that. Yeah. Um, in terms of, so Tucker just said in my interview that he would want to do the challenge. Anyone coming from Big Brother that's gonna go on the challenge, like what sort of advice would you give them? Don't be a bitch. Okay. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, don't come. The one thing I hate the most is people who say, I want to do the challenge, talk all this shit online, which I'm not saying he has or hasn't, yeah. right? But he has shown interest in the challenge. Um, I can't stand rookies who come in and tiptoe around um, and try and be quiet as a mouse because either they're intimidated or what have you, or what it is like, come in, make some noise, put a stamp on who you are and whatever happens, happens. Right. I like, you know, one of the things is it's like, you know, I took a little bit of a break from the challenge, um, you know, but the only reason why I think I was able to come back is because I was an unforgettable character in those first three seasons that I did. Um, and I will never change anything that I did in those first three seasons. Um, you know, where people are like, Hey, if you came in this way, maybe you would have won, you know, one or two. And I'm like, 
Maybe, but most likely not, because if I came in any other way than I did, I was going into eliminations anyway, Mm -hmm. because that's just what the pecking order was at the time um, that I came in. Uh, But you can't deny that I was a character on those first three seasons. And, you know, when I come back on a challenge season, there's just a different aura to the challenge. I mean, I was only there two episodes, but... Made a big splash. <laughs> made a big splash. You know what I mean? And um, and that's the thing is people are remembered for um, a lot of things, right? You could either be there long enough to win as much as Johnny and CT, or you could be that good like Jordan, um, or you could have an arc that goes from not being good to being very good like Kara, um, or, you know, you're just an animal like Laurel. Right. But everybody's remembered for things outside of just their competition. That's a good point. That's a really good point. Actually. I've never even thought about that. And then obviously, you know, the challenge is it's not even comparable in terms of what's physically harder, but in the terms of socially harder is the challenge or big brother. Do you think harder socially? Well, the thing is, it's two different things night and day, right? Like on Big Brother, you can pull out every stop in the book, um, you know, to try and win. And as long as the result is winning, you know, you're genius. Nobody can do anything, you know, about it. Um, in the challenge, you know, it it is more like real life because, you know, you have to keep a certain um, – social currency with people. Something that you do one season is going to affect you the next season. Mm -hmm. Um, And once again, if you're boring, you won't be asked back for a second season. Um, You know what I mean? So like, if you're one of those people, it's like, Oh, I'm just going to tiptoe around and wait till I get thrown into elimination. It's like, so you're going to have no character, no story. and And you're hoping that if you win, that's your storyline. When you got a 50, 50 shot, no matter what you go into, um, an elimination, um, to do it. So, you know, my advice from a challenge standpoint is go in, have a different strategy every single season, but don't go with a strategy that is, is going to shoot you in the foot, uh, for future seasons. So make sure that all of your moves are justifiable, um, and make sure that you have logic, you know, behind everything. Um, you know, every now and then make it a little bit personal and go after people. Cause it's just like, I don't like you. Yeah. And well, this- I, I appreciate people who aren't fake too. Cause it is tough. Like, Dude, I, don't know. That's, I hate that about the challenge is it's like you, like somebody has to, there's so many variables, right? Like in big brother, you know, if you win an HOH, you can't compete in the following HOH. Mm-hmm. You could compete in any veto that you're nominated for, but you could get backdoored. And at the end of the day, you're voted out by a vote. In the challenge, you can win back-to-back dailies. Somebody also still has to throw you into an elimination, and then you have to go home. So I don't like people that go on the challenge, and it's like they clearly feel a certain type of way about somebody, but it's like, so I'm voting you in because, like, you know, you're just such a strong competitor and uh i hope you come back it's like no that is your moment to sit there and say i'm throwing you in because i don't fucking like you for this list of reasons i hope you go home and i hope you cry about it and think about me while you're sitting at home like that is your moment to create an enemy not create an ally you know Mm -hmm. what i mean And I just feel like too many people um, want to be friends with everybody or they're afraid of what they're going to be perceived on on social media. And, you know, you're on reality TV. Like, just like if you're worried about what people are going to think about you on social media, you don't belong on reality TV. Well, that's 100 percent true. Yeah. Don't go on reality TV at all. Yeah. (laughs) Um, What is the future of the challenge look like for you? Like, are you if they're calling you every season, are you going every season or are you? I mean, I'm for damn sure going until I win. Okay. I'm for damn sure going until I get my vendetta against Theo. Huh? Um, I'm for damn sure going until I get my vendetta against a couple of people that I think were, you know, riding against me um, this season. So, like, for me, 
I think the challenge is in um, this time period where I feel as though Johnny, CT, Wes, Cara, Laurel, maybe a few others. So if I didn't name names, don't don't come for you. Yeah. Don't, don't, don't crucify me on the cross. Um, but they carried the show for, for a good amount of time. They carried the show through what I like, you know, what I like to call Johnny's references before, like, you know, the dark times, mm-hmm. right? Like the dark times of like, who is going to be that next person or group of people that carries the mantle the same way that that specific group of people that I just mentioned carried it from when Mark Long, Derek K, Darrell, Brad, Tina, Rachel, you know, Anissa passed the torch to those people. They carried it for a very long time. Um, and when you really think about it, all right, Jordan, a name, a name that, you know, somebody capable of being that. But where is the group of people? There sure as hell isn't many to pick from from era four. Um, you know, there's also not that many to pick from era three. Yeah, there's not that many, I feel like. You know, so like on my side of things, like I feel as though I, you know, after speaking to a lot of the OGs and hearing what the show actually means to them, I'm not interested in people coming on this show for clout, for social media, for being friends with everybody, for, you know, what they care about online and everything. So, you know, I'm almost here at this point to keep the, um, you know, keep the sanctity of, of the challenge in order, keep the structure of the challenge in order. Um, and make sure that the torch gets passed the correct way. And I don't want people there who are just happy to be there. You know, I'm going to make, I'm going to make you work for it. You know what I mean? I'm going to put you to the fire. Um, you know, and obviously I have my own goals that I want in terms of winning, um, you know, writing some of the wrongs. Um, I think coming back and I was at peace on USA two and all of that peace went out the window um, on season 40. And now I've transitioned into the point where I want peace in my real life. Um, but I want absolute blood and chaos in the house. And I'm happy to be the person that provides the blood and chaos in the house. And, um, yeah, the future of the challenge to me looks like doing what that era two people did where like, it was the first time that people actually took the game seriously. It's when certain showrunners came in and took the show to another level of absolute craziness. Um, you know, I think it's time to keep the show absolutely crazy. And I think it's time to bring in people who actually take the show seriously and want, and want to go at each other's necks and aren't going to sit there after a decision gets made to throw somebody into an elimination. It's like, Oh, I completely understand why you're throwing me into an elimination. It's like, no, fuck you, dude. You're putting my chance at this money on the line. Like, no, yeah. I'm going to come back and I'm going to come for your, come for your neck. Um, that's what the future of the show um, is to me. You know, I think that through competition brings out people's personalities. Mm. And I think some of the major personalities that we've had over the years our only personalities because they wanted to kill each other over camcorders and sidekicks and, you know, <laughs> motorcycles, you know, now there's a lot of money on the line and all of a sudden people are like nicer about the money being on the line. It's like, guys, this is life changing money. Stab somebody in the <laughs> throat. What are we doing here? <laughs> I remember when all the the challenges were so silly. It was like put on a fashion show, like way back in the day. It's so different, but in a good yeah. way. I like that uh, it's evolved. But yeah, okay. So the challenge, obviously, you're now a staple on that show. If Big Brother ever calls you, are you picking up that call or no? I, I listen. I I would love to get another shot at playing Big Brother. Um, just because I would go in with a completely different mindset and mentality. I would just go there to have fun. Um, and see where that takes me. The only thing, and I've really thought about this, I've meditated on it. I've, you know, done visualizations on it. And I'm really trying to get past that point of like, once you go in that door and that freaking back door closes, how do you get through that, um, you know, moment? And, you know, maybe I'm at a different place, um, where, you know, practicing enough breathing techniques to get over being locked in the house, uh, would work. Um, but, uh, yeah, it, it would have to be a game time decision. And I have to think about it. Now I would do reindeer games. 
You would? I was going to yeah. ask. Yeah, I would do reindeer games. I would love reindeer games, you know, nice little two week, two week tango there. You know, we love a good two week tango. Um, you would kill it on reindeer games, right? I, you know, I would love reindeer games. I like those little quirky games that are like, you know, stress induced, but staying composed under pressure. Um, you know, and also not, you know, much time for like strategy, just kind of mm -hmm. like, Hey, who's going in That's this good. person, this person. Awesome. Let's do it. Um, yeah. I mean, that'd be, what, that'd be cool. What about the traders? Cause obviously bananas and West they're, they're doing it. Cody didn't have the best experience. Would you, ever, how do you think you would do on that show? Um, so I had to turn down traders three because of, um, you know, contractual things. Um, <clears throat> you know, traders four is on the table, um, you know, and traders at a certain point is on the table 100%. Um, but I, I will stick to, you know, what I've, what I've always said and what I've been saying is, I have a lot of unfinished business on the challenge. I have a chip on my shoulder when it comes to the challenge. Um, you know, I would like to get a win or two under my belt before, you know, branching out into that time frame. Um, you know, but if the timing lines up and you know the contracts um don't conflict um and traders is on the table, I'll happily do it. Um, you know, same with House of Villains. Oh. We love a good villain, Polly. We love a good villain. We got we love a good villain. Am I still the villain when you fill out your big brother um thing and, and the face pops up of like what type of big brother player are you? Oh, I don't even know. But like there's <clears throat> gotta be worse people. People do really nasty, like really nasty things in there. Um, who knows? I don't know. But, I was I was shocked that my name was the villain face for so long, but you know, now I was like I was like I didn't well, even know that. Yeah, I think I'm like the kind of villain where people love to root against, and I'm okay with that. Yeah, you no, know? that's that's I'm, the perfect villain. Yeah, I'm alright with a love to hate relationship. You yeah. Know? Well, Polly, thank you so much. You were really gracious with your time today, and you know, I love you know chatting with the, about the challenge too. I don't often get to do that, and I've been watching that show since its inception. So, uh, so yeah, thank you for taking the time. Yeah. Well, thank you for taking the time. I appreciate you and I'm glad we finally got to link up, not officially face-to-face, -face, but virtually face-to-face. -face. Yeah, of course.